Good evening. I'm Richard Love, and this is American Art Forum. Art has been a mystery and a joy for millions since the beginning of man. Is art meaningful to you, or is it a strange and distant part of our culture? Then let art historian Richard Love and his guests make art come alive. By exploring every avenue of the American art community, Love focuses on its makers and shakers, its traditions and its innovations. You may not always agree, but you will like what you see on American Art Forum. Now here's Richard Love. Tonight on American Art Forum, my guest is the governor of Illinois, James R. Thompson. I've been privileged on many occasions to witness the governor in action as he pursues art for some special Illinois project and even for his own collection. Certainly you know about some of it. The media does keep us informed. But what do you really know about his motivations in the art-oriented endeavors? Governor Thompson began collecting in 1970, and his collection of paintings and antiques has grown ever since. In an article in Arts and Antiques magazine, he stated his intention to increase the state's collection of art and antiques, especially as they pertain to its history. Owing to his position, Governor Thompson has a unique opportunity to enhance the awareness of Illinois' position in the larger national art community. However, the task is not so simple, and it could contain some precarious political ramifications. So, I'll ask Governor Thompson to shed some light on how his role relates to the role of government in the arts. And holding the highest office in the state, this of course presents certain opportunities, but also some limitations, some political realities, and these sometimes mitigate the best idealistic motivations, especially when it pertains to the taxpayers' dollars. How does Governor Thompson's private leanings toward fine art reflect in his public duties? That's our topic tonight, and the best way to get answers is to ask. Governor, it's certainly great to have you here, and Thank you. you've heard that little introduction, so... Uh, That's pretty good. Without Thanks. further ado, <laughs> I'd like to ask how, just, it's a broad question, but just exactly how do your, uh, do your interests in art uh, relate to your role as, as governor and, and your uh, endeavors therefrom? I think, Richard, they, uh, they sharpen my sensitivity towards making sure that the whole people of the state of Illinois for whose uh, government and budget I'm responsible, have the opportunity to have acquired for public ownership and public display some great examples of contemporary Illinois art, and that they also uh, take advantage of the opportunity to acquire and save some of the best examples from our past. Uh, we learn from our past in Illinois, and in all forums. Just skipping broadly, for example, I think it was my own interest in my own antique and art collection, which, as you say, began some 15 years ago, that impelled me in 1982 to make sure that the finest Frank Lloyd Wright house available in America, the Dana Thomas house in Springfield, just a block from the governor's mansion, with all of its furnishings intact, did not get sold, chopped up with the windows sent to New York and the dining room chairs auctioned off, but instead became the property of the people of Illinois, uh, for whom uh, Frank Lloyd Wright has a special meaning uh, with his contributions to the architecture of our state, not just the Chicago area, but our state. Today, that uh, Dana Thomas House in uh, Springfield uh, not only uh, serves as host to thousands of people from around the world, but uh, owned by the people of the state of Illinois is worth about three times what we paid for it in 1982. It is all together, as Wright intended when he built it. Uh, moving up to Bloomington, Illinois, uh, we've for a long time owned the David Davis House. The relationship between David Davis and Abraham Lincoln is a strong one. David Davis was Abraham Lincoln's best friend and campaign manager. David Davis acquired the Republican nomination for president for Lincoln in 1860. Lincoln later appointed him to the Supreme Court of the United States. The David Davis home in Bloomington, Illinois, has been owned by the state for a number of years now, but has been literally falling down, and there wasn't much interest in restoring it. It also happens to be the finest example of Italian architecture in the state. So there you have coming together a, a fine example of a period of, of American architecture. You have uh, the house owned by someone who was important in the history of Illinois and in the history of the United States with a special 
relationship to Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. You have uh, ownership by the state of Illinois, but we weren't doing our duty towards the House. Now I'm pleased to say that we are because the legislature, at my urging, appropriated enough money to restore it. Sure. And it, too, will go back on the tour. Uh, but we don't look just to the, the to the history and to the past. Uh, our work with the State of Illinois Center in Chicago, beginning with the building itself, which is a which is controversial. Contra <laughs> that's the mildest thing that's been said about it. It's it, it's controversy, been been praised to the heavens, uh, damned to the heavens, but it also is going to house one of the finest collections of contemporary Illinois art uh, in existence in the world today. Perhaps that's the already, finest. And that's already started. And that's already started. In 1978, I signed a bill called the Arts and Architecture Program which specified that 1.5% of all the construction money available for, for new buildings in the state of Illinois would be set aside for fine art and decorative art. Right. And uh, that's already uh, produced a, a fund of a million and a half dollars since 1978, which has gone entirely to Illinois artists, more than 200 of them uh, from all over the state of Illinois, and will produce another million and a half dollars in the next two years. And the range in medium is extraordinary. All sorts of mediums in terms of, of the art involved, all sorts of imagery involved, all sorts of schools involved, mm -hmm. a wide geographical base, uh, uh, artists from uh, Beecher, Illinois to Woodstock uh, and everything in between have participated in the program. And uh, purchases have been as small as $55 for a needlepoint to $100,000 for a commissioned major sculptor. So, so it has a certain practical purpose. Uh, we're, not, we're not talking about just enhancing culture from the outside so it's tinsel. We're, we're talking about the internal mechanism of art in Illinois, as you see it. Uh, you, uh, you know, so many times uh, the cultural community does things uh, uh, on, a, on a pedestal, and people view it as though it's something way up there in Never Never Land. Are you saying you're trying to involve the local citizenry more? Well, this is, is, this is a very, uh, very democratic process because in addition to a, a fine arts committee which has uh, selected many of the major pieces as it's part of the anchor collection of the State of Illinois Center downtown. Uh, we've got an open competition in a number of mediums in which any artist resident in the State of Illinois uh, can enter and, uh, and win a prize, uh, provided that the talent is there. So it's not just a group of five uh, people of the art elite uh, of sure. Illinois who have their own preconceptions or biases as, any, as anybody serving on that kind of committee would. I don't impose my tastes uh, on the uh, on the program. In fact, uh, the existence of the program has broadened my taste because my office in Chicago contains examples of, of Illinois art, uh, which range from uh, 1920 Chicago Impressionism to to Southern Illinois WP, WPA uh, uh, work, uh, landscapes uh, of a Victorian era, and some very uh, uh, fine contemporary pieces. Genre portraiture, I know. Uh, in yes. The collection. Sure. Yes, I mean, it's sure. a whole wide range, and so the, the existence of the program has helped broaden my personal taste, as well as my personal interest, I think, giving a, a, a needed push. Uh, Illinois Arts Council funding, for example, in my administration uh, has increased dramatically, up 110 percent in just the last couple of and years. And this week is special. Uh, this week is very special. We start, this is Illinois Arts Week. Right. And Beginning the, on the 27th. The Beginning 27th the of, of September through October 6th. The, uh, the chairman of the National Endowment for the Humanities is going to be our guest in Illinois this week, proclaiming the 20th anniversary of Illinois Arts Week. And uh, we do some special things in Illinois. Not only uh, does the Illinois Arts Council give grants to uh, art endeavors in communities throughout the state of Illinois uh, in all kinds of mediums, the performing arts, uh, paintings, uh, artists in residence, uh, lecture series throughout the state. Uh, but we're the only state with a uh, movable art exhibit. We have an art train in Illinois that's visited a number of downstate John Riley told us about that. It's, a, it's an exciting thing that we're doing, and there's never been, I think, a time in the history of the state of Illinois when there's been a keener interest in Illinois art. We've got some great talent in this state. For, for a number of years, it was, it was on the back burner. The annual budget, for example, of the Illinois State Museum for acquisition is only about $30,000 for the whole year, and the museum's been collecting since 1928. So you can see the impact of a program like Arts and Architecture, which in just uh, four years now has managed to spend a million and a half, and will spend that much in the next two years. That's a lot of money. We're going to spend just a little bit of money right now as we take a break for an important message when we'll return on American Art Forum. 
We're back on American Art Forum, and my guest is Governor Thompson. We're certainly pleased that he can help explain some of the issues about art, which the media has uh, given plenty of attention to. Uh, uh, I mentioned a little earlier, Governor, that, uh, uh, that uh, Arts Week in Illinois uh, began today. That's not true. It began yesterday on the 27th of September. And, and uh, I wonder, uh, could you explain, please, uh, uh, we, we already touched upon the issue of the of the controversial State of Illinois Center, uh, but it, as far as the controversy is concerned, I don't want to drag that out here, but uh, the interior houses so many important pieces of art, uh, uh, ones that are near your office and not so near your office. It's been uh, certainly a wonderful success in that regard, hasn't it? It has indeed. Uh, first, uh, simply for the sheer pleasure of, of state employees, several thousand who work in the building, who came from a building across the street which had deteriorated over the years and which didn't have a single lick of, of culture about it, even though it was a very fine building. When it was originally built, it was a Daniel Burnham building, sure. which we're going to restore. But nobody ever hung a picture or a poster or a painting or any kind of work unless they brought something of their own. Now on every floor, there's a major piece in some medium as the anchor for the floor and then the smaller pieces radiate out. These are the pieces that have already been acquired by the, by the selection committee. They'll be augmented by another $200,000 worth of open competition material. When we're through, the State of Illinois Center will have the largest, most valuable, and finest collection of Illinois art in the state. Do you ever get involved in the selection? <laughs> no, I haven't been involved in the selection because I don't think a governor should impose his, his views. His taste. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that I've done is to say that, uh, well, I like that piece. Uh, could that one hang on my floor sure. or, or in my office? And even my office is accessible to uh, not only the people who work in the building but to the public as well. In fact, it's become kind of a tradition. The uh, atrium of the State of Illinois Center, which is one of the most remarkable spaces in architecture that exists in the world today. It's incredible. It truly is. It has been host to uh, an increasing number of public functions, uh, civic functions, charitable functions. And uh, sort of a tradition has grown up uh, around those functions which are held, their receptions or dinners or lunches or what have you. I don't know how it got started, but it started and we can't stop it, and I really don't want to stop it. Uh, people include a tour of the governor's office as part of the function. In other words, when, when a group gathers for dinner in the atrium, they're told, uh, if before dinner you want to tour the building, and especially the governor's office, you're welcome to do that. Somebody will be up there and take them through. This is after office hours, and we've encouraged that, and a lot of people have come through for two reasons. One, some, some fine pieces of the SOIC collection are up there on, on that floor. Well, we need to tell the, the, our viewers a little bit about what's in your office. And then inside the office is something really unique. It, it's an idea I had that's grown. I'm so enamored of the talent that we have in Illinois in all sorts of art mediums that I thought we ought to have a permanent collection for the governor's office. And so uh, we began with some loan pieces, including some pieces uh, from your gallery, I'm, I'm pleased to say, and from other galleries around Chicago and uh, some pieces loaned by the Chicago Historical Society, George Pullman's desk, right. for example, uh, spanning a wide range of mediums, bronzes, paintings, furniture, and a wide range of uh, eras of, of Illinois art from uh, Victorian landscape by Junius Sloan, for example, a, a WPA painting that I found in southern Illinois, um, a contemporary Bill Niffenegger that hangs over my couch, but everything in my office is Illinois in derivation. It was done by an Illinois artist, or it was manufactured in Illinois. The furniture, old and new. The paintings, uh, old and new. Uh, the fine arts, the decorative arts. There's a brand new contemporary whirligig of Abraham Lincoln that I acquired in southern Illinois. My office is a showpiece for Illinois art, spanning a range of around 100 years. And from that will come a permanent collection that will pass on to the next occupant of the governor's office. Well, speaking of that, we have a, a, a little a tape, a short tape, and I wonder if you'd uh, give us the pleasure of doing a little voiceover on sure. that as we, as we run that. That'll this give is the new State of Illinois Center in Chicago. It's both the symbol and the home of state government in this city. It was dedicated earlier this year. That's a major sculpture by John Henry, which is an anchor piece on the inside. 
And this is sort of an overview of some of the major pieces of the collection. These are the kind of anchor pieces that I'm talking about that are on each floor. Roger Brown's, Brown's Buffalo, uh, which is a, uh, a Mr. Squeaker. Uh, there is a very contemporary uh, piece of wooden sculpture that's in my office uh, at the moment, Public Squeaker Number 1. Reflective of contemporary. Jim Nutt's uh, sure. Not So Fast, which also hangs in my office. And uh, the Du Buffet, of course, which is not an Illinois piece, but which was donated by uh, private citizens I to remember stand the in, opening the, day. in right. the plaza. Samantha says that looks like Snoopy there at the top, and I think she may be, uh, she may be right. You even said that when it was unveiled. And here, of course, we have the front facade with the Du Buffet in front. Uh, a very imposing structure and uh, and impressive to say the least. And in as size. soon as we can get the air conditioning to work, it'll be absolutely perfect. Yes. Well, we we won't bring that up though. We'll <laughs> we'll focus on the cultural part of it. Uh, regarding culture overall in Illinois, you haven't left any part of it undone. When John Riley was here discussing the art train and other uh, focuses, we've uh, especially in Springfield that uh, there's a lot of art to be seen there too, isn't there? Yes, there is. Uh, the Illinois State Museum uh, is one of the finest small museums in the world. World. Their collection of Illinois art is, uh, is a fantastic one. They've been in the business now for uh, over 50 years, uh, and they've been very generous, too. They loan paintings to the museum, to, to the uh, governor's mansion, to the governor's office, to the office of other constitutional officers, and, and I've tried to increase their appropriation for acquiring pieces. I sometimes take on orphan causes, a, a different one each year. When I deal with a budget of $17 billion, $30,000 for the Illinois State Museum to acquire pieces doesn't seem like a lot. But if I don't push it, it might get lost. So one year it's the David Davis Mansion, one year it's the Illinois State Museum, one year it's the Illinois State Historical Library. This year and next, I'm, I'm pushing something that I think has a double purpose. In the new State of Illinois Center will be a crafts gallery. If that is successful, and it will display the best work of, of contemporary Illinois artists and craftsmen. And their works will not only be displayed, but available for sale in much the same way that New England states promote their native art sure. talent and, and furnish a retail outlet for it that an artist could not afford to maintain on his own. It not only shows our pride in, in the work of Illinois artists, but it helps keep them going by giving them a retail sales outlet. If that's successful, and I think it will be, I'll move that concept to Springfield. We'll have a similar gallery at the other end of the state. And then we'll move it to the state lodge system, state park lodges, which are opening up in the next several years so that tourists coming in from out of the state or from around the state can see some of the work of Illinois uh, wood carvers or, or metal smiths sure. or, or, Ordinary, or the, artists. the artisans. We're going to have to take a short break right now. Uh, we'll return shortly on American Art Forum with Governor Thompson. We're back with Governor Thompson. We're discussing art, of course, here on American Art Forum. And uh, we mentioned earlier that uh, yesterday began uh, uh, Illinois or Arts Week in Illinois, and we hope that you'll uh, observe that with the same attention that the governor does. Uh, <laughs> what special functions uh, are going on about the state? Oh, Lord. Must Lord. be a ton of them, huh? There are, there are a ton of them, and they're mostly community-based, which is, is the way that we like to, to focus the activity. Every year, there is a Governor's Arts Award ceremony and we not only recognize people who are important in the Illinois arts world in a number of different mediums, in both the visual and the performing arts, uh, but we commission a major piece of art as the award. This year, for example, Richard Hunt did a special small bronze about that high called Hybrid Muse, which what was an the outstanding prize. Piece. It's a super piece uh, by, a, by an incredibly good Illinois artist who's also represented in the SOIC anchor uh, collection, but we prefer to have the emphasis on the community. The Illinois Arts Council exists primarily to, to provide seed money to community organizations and to, to young artists across the state of Illinois to get things started that just wouldn't happen otherwise and to sure. challenge local communities. So there will be literally hundreds of local community arts events across the state of Illinois during the week of September 27th through October 6th. You and I sat in a meeting one time, a very informal meeting, and spoke with someone important. The name's not, th th that doesn't matter. We don't have to say it here. But uh, she said, she said, Governor, Mr. Love, really, I'm tired of hearing about all this art. What about cancer? Uh, there are more important things to be considered 
in, in government than so much art. Have you? You must have had that kind of criticism. Are you? You know, the the typical idea is governors sure. spending too much time on culture and not enough on. Well, on I, other I hear that, and and it's a perception that I'm always glad to correct. In fact, there have been times in Illinois' recent history, while I've been governor, when arts had to take a back seat mm -hmm. to more pressing human needs. For example, in the, in the midst of the worst recession that this nation and state have suffered in the last 50 years, between 80 and 83, when I had to cut the budget in 1982 five times during the course of the year, funding for the arts was cut way, way back. I remember. And I had to choose between funding for arts and funding basic human needs like food and clothing and shelter and taking care of poor people. And that choice was fairly easy, even though there were some people in the arts community that didn't understand that arts would have to wait. Since we've come out of recession and are coming out fairly strongly, uh, not only has funding for human services dramatically increased, in fact, this, this year is the best budget for human services in the history of the state of Illinois. Just last week, for example, I signed a, a package of bills which puts the state into the fight in a new area, Alzheimer's disease, sure. that we've not been in before. We've gone from not being in the fight at all to being number one in the nation with a stroke of my pen after one session of the legislature. But we've also gone back and renewed and enhanced our commitment to the arts. So we balance in Illinois. We subsidize museums throughout the state of Illinois, but we also challenge other people to help, including the museums themselves. I signed a bill this year which lets the uh, museums of Illinois take advantage of the state's bond rating to sell their bonds at a little lower price so they'll have more money for operations. What about as corporate? As well as for capital uh, expansion. Corporation. And uh, we challenge corporations in Illinois to, to get involved both through the Illinois Arts Council and in direct subsidies to museum programs, for example. We've got a number of Illinois-based corporations, multinational corporations based here in Illinois, who because they have major corporate art collections or because their chairmen are, are arts-minded have been very generous. Uh, AT&T, for example, has put in over a million dollars in Chicago-based theater, Steppenwolf, Wisdom Bridge, which then went on to, to show at the Kennedy Center in Washington. It's one of the reasons why, for example, if you go to Broadway today, some of the best productions are, are not those which originated in Broadway, but which Broadway is, in truth, borrowed from Chicago. Picked up. Yes, and that's used right. and exploited, that's right. And for the first time this year, uh, since we regard public broadcasting as a form of art that ought to be supported, I've signed a bill which restores and doubles funding for public radio in the state of Illinois and funds, pu what, which re restores and doubles funding for public television in the state of Illinois and, and gives funding to public radio for the first time in our history. But your personal preference, just for our viewers, we, we've got to know that. That's basically 19th and early 20th century, is it not? 19th and early 20th century American art uh, with, uh, I guess, uh, the major emphasis on uh, Impressionism. Which and is, Illinois. And Artists and from Illinois, especially. Artists from Illinois are, are part of the collection, but I'm not limited to Illinois. Uh, American art is, uh, is my whole field, ranging from Impressionism to WPTA, WPA to um, a great deal of landscape, uh, both uh, realism and Impressionism, good mixture there. Uh, even have one uh, American folk art painting, uh, a rather naive painting of two brothers uh, that I bought because the oldest brother looks exactly like I did at the age of, of 13, but it's a fine painting in addition. Uh, some regionalism. Some uh, strong academic uh, uh, works you have. I'm thinking right. of that J.G. Brown. That John George Brown, uh, yeah, in a, in a non-genre Brown at that. It's a very unusual one, the kind that the Rockefeller family has collected for years found a painting the other day by an Iowa artist who was a student of Hopper. And uh, the painting is a pastel of, uh, of a farm field, and it's a real gem. I mean, so I look everywhere. And I'm, I'm not, while I'm partial to Illinois artists, I, can, I don't confine myself to Illinois. I, I collect broadly across the scope of American art. And, uh, and I've started to collect in the Midwest region, Illinois, Indiana, sure. Iowa, uh, artists because I think there's a, a very strong underrated talent in, in uh, Midwest uh, regionalism. That's for certain. I can say that as an art historian. Governor, we have only a couple of seconds left. Uh, uh, if you'd urge our 
our viewers to do anything on this Arts Week, what would it be? And only a second, please. And then we're going to have to break quickly. Go learn something. Go learn something. Go to the Richard Love Galleries <laughs> or, or the Campanile Galleries or the Sternberg Galleries or pick the gallery of your choice or the muse museum of your choice. Take an hour out this week and learn something. That's great advice, and I can't thank you enough. We'll see you soon again next week with a new topic on American Art Forum.